McDowell. I'm Adam Unger and this is the Trojan Blitz, a sports highlight show produced by the students that covers the students made for the students. We have the debut of McDowell Wrestling and an interview with McDowell basketball shooting guard, Max Kerr. Let's get started. The McDowell Trojans taking on the Villa Victors at home. Here Marissa Molnar passes it to Kelsey Swantak who finds Mary Smith for the easy layup. Trojans get off to a good start. However, Morgan Putnam turns the table as she steals the ball from Kelsey Swantek, and she has an easy lay-in. The game will go back and forth here. Molly Rankiewicz finds Lexi Simpson for the two. The victors will come right back, however, as here's some good ball movement to the ball. Finally finds Deja Young, who drives the lane, gets the bucket, and one. The Trojans led at the half. However, the second half would be all victors. The Trojans couldn't keep the ball in their hands as they turn the ball over often in the second half. Jackie Kitts with the steal goes coast to coast until she finally scores and gets an and one. Morgan Putnam again on the steal and she finds Anna Sweeney for the easy basket. Victors would get one more here as Deja Young picks it off and takes it the other way. Lexi Simpson finds Danielle Christensen who tries to bring the Trojans back with that three ball of her own. Christensen would lead the Trojans with eight points. However, Villa was too much in the second half and the Trojans lose by 16. Trojan men's basketball team taking on Mercyhurst Prep at home. Early action was all about senior forward Justin Blake. Here Blake gets out behind the arc, takes a feed from Max Kerr, drains the three. Later on, next possession, gets a feed from Tarasovich. From way downtown, he hits it. Trojan top five nominee here as Quinn Lewis comes down with the rebound, impersonates Jake Tarasovich as he finds Sox coast to coast for the layup. Later on, Quinn again on the long bomb, this time finding Andy Strominger for two points. Mercyhurst not happy about that one. This time, Dylan Dirkmat finds Jake Tarasovich and he splits the defenders for the bucket to give the Trojans a 32-19 lead heading into the half. Moving ahead to second half action, Jay Blake comes down with the rebound. Lewis hits Stroh for another long bomb for the layup. Later on in the game, Max Kerr would catch fire. Here he goes back door, takes a feed from Jake Tarasovich, two points. His entire performance earns a Trojan top five nominee as he led the Trojans with 20 points, including four three-pointers. Here he takes another feed from Quinn Lewis, slows down the fast break, and drains it. Trojans roll past the Mercyhurst Prep Lakers, 66 to 44. Hello, welcome to Trojan Talk. For this episode, we brought in McDowell boys shooting guard, Max Kerr. Max, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. So, transitioning from last season into this season, what was different replacing seniors like Matt Hansen, Mike Beck, and Dalton Graffius? They just, they had such a great chemistry with myself, Quinn, and, and Andy Stroh, and they, they really worked well with us and together, and uh, basically, the, the difference between, I think the difference between this year and last year is the um, the chemistry and the and the toughness. I think we I think we lack toughness, but we're we're getting there and we're working at it. And by by the end of the season and and as the snowball keeps rolling, we'll 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 get there. I think definitely. Now a lot of the offense that you guys run seems to be really freewheeling, and a lot of games look to have someone one or two players who just have the hot hand on the stat sheet. Like you, light them up for. 20, 25 points with four or five three-pointers, and the next game you kind of fade away, and then Stroh picks up the slack with 25 points. Is there a certain aspect of the offense that is taught by Coach O'Connor to feed the hot hand, or is it just natural for you guys? O'Connor uh, uh, preaches if, if he's hot giving the ball. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're very small, uh, considering we lost all that height and tenacity from last year. But, um, yeah, it's... The problem is the qu the question is whether or not we can myself and say Andrew Andy Stroh and and Quinn if we can all have twenty point games if myself and and Andy can and can both be hot in one game and have go for forty five points combined uh, sometimes when when one person gets hot the offense is completely around that person and we get stagnant we don't move. It's just sort of one-on-one -on -one with that person, it, whether it's myself, uh, Quinn, Andy, Jay Blake, uh, or Dirk even, uh, Dylan Dirk, Matt. Uh, 
but yeah, it's um, it's definitely a lot of running, and uh, we like to get out and run, especially with our size and and uh, yeah, I guess the the problem is is finding a way to uh, get great games out of all the players at one time and not just rely on one person. Now, you've talked a lot about speed and your guys' lack of size. How exactly would you attack a lineup with, say, multiple players over 6'5"? Well, our first game against Taylor Alderdice, Alderdice we, um, we were definitely uh, outsized, I guess. Uh, they, their guards were 6'2", 6'4", 6'3". Their bit, tallest big man was 6'8". Uh, we played a lot of zone. A lot of we trapped out of our one three one zone that's called Kelly. Um, but you gotta if if you're playing against that kind of size, you gotta you gotta get into your man. You can't just jump with them. You're obviously not gonna get to get a rebound or, or or get a tip in or anything like that. But you gotta be physical. You gotta out tough them and and uh, get them out of the paint. But that's sometimes a lot easier said than done. Um, but yeah, and, and I think I think zone defense helps a lot because especially in a two three zone, there's there's five guys sort of compact in the paint area. There's three on the bottom, two up top. So if you can find if you when the shot goes up, if you can find a man to box out, it's it's a lot easier to get the rebound out of the zone. But um, the number one thing is just to be aggressive and tough. <laughs> the McDowell Trojan wrestling team making their debut on the Trojan Blitz. Here, Ryan Daly gets the pin to start it off for the Trojans. And then Charlie Lennox, within the first minute, gets the pin. Then here, Keegan Fordyce, with an opportunity to put the Trojans ahead, he gets the pin. It would all come down to the final match between Dijon Castro and Lucci DeRose. Dijon Castro would outlast Lucci, and he would go on to win the match for the Trojans. The Trojans would outlast Titusville 42 to 33. Quaker Valley Quakers paying a visit to the McDowell Trojans hockey team. Second period action, Jack Woodburn on the blast from the point. Aubrey Terrace playing with the big boys put home the rebound. Down at the other end, Jake King tries to carry it into the slot. Adam Stormer picks it up and scores. With that goal, the Trojans brought it within four as they were down six to two. Other end of the ice, Connor Quinn, the American sniper, just lays it past Cameron Reese. Moving ahead to the third period, Adam Pilowitz, the team captain, finds Quinn again for what would be his second goal of the game. And we'll show you one more here from sophomore Noah Schultz as the Trojans fall 11-2. Lakers Valley Lakers. Hello. Welcome to the McDowell Minute. The girls basketball team came away with two tight road victories against Jenner McLean and Gerard. The girls hung on to beat GM 51-50 and Marissa Molnar's buzzer-beating layup led the Trojans past Gerard 41-39. The McDowell hockey team traveled to Robert Morris University to take on the Montour Spartans. However, they lost 9-3. The McDowell swim and dive team dominated all of its competition since its home opener against East. In the last two weeks, they've defeated Strong Vincent, Central Tech, and Meadville. The McDowell boys basketball team rolled past General McLean in a 58-49 victory. They were led by shooting guard and interviewee Max Kerr with 23 points. The wrestling team's undefeated season lives on as they defeated Oil City in a near sweep of 69-6. That's all we got for the McDowell Minute. McDowell Trojans Lady Basketball Team taking on Strong Vincent at home. Kelsey Swantek gets it going early with a three-pointer. Here Marissa Molnar from the same spot with the triple. Trojans were hot from behind the arc. Here Marissa Molnar gets the pass from Mary Smith and she drains it. Kylie Cosgrove from behind the arc. Here the rebound gets kicked around. Ball finds Danielle Christensen. She goes coast to coast. D-nasty with the finish. Here pass goes into Molly Rankovich and she scores. Trojans would roll in this one. Marissa Molnar with the steal. Kelsey Swantek passes it back to her. Trojans would roll over the Colonels. Kelsey Swantek with this three. They win 58 to 19. Now let's end this with the Trojan top five. Number five play coming from the girls basketball team as former interviewee Danielle Christensen gets the ball off of a missed rebound. She goes coast to coast and D-Nasty finishes with the bucket. Number four play coming from Charlie Lennox on the mat going for the quick pin against Titusville to help seal a 42-33 victory. Ice, ice baby. The number three play coming from the McDowell hockey team 
Jake King passes it to Adam Stormer who puts a top shelf. Number two coming from the hardwood, Quinn Lewis doing his best Jake Tarasovich impression. Finds Socks coast to coast for the layup on the long outlet pass. And the number one play coming from Max Kerr. Kerr dropped 20 points in the victory of the Lakers. Here a backdoor cut for the bucket. A three-pointer and one more for good measure. Trojans would go on to win that one, 66-44. That's all we've got. Happy Hanukkah from all of us here at the Trojan Blitz. I'm Adam Unger. And I'm Vinny Crone. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year.